in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use your racing simulator pedals as rudder pedals in flight simulators like Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. Uh, this is absolutely fantastic for those of you that don't want to buy additional equipment and your driving simulator pedals will work perfectly fine for 99% of what you need to do in a flight simulator with pedals. So let's get going. Welcome back to the Gaming Muscle YouTube channel. Click that like button and subscribe if you want to. To get this to work, first of all, you need to download VJoy and Universal Joystick Remapper. Links in the description. Whilst you're downloading those, I'm quickly going to explain what's going on here and why we're doing what we're doing, because it will make the process of actually setting this up a lot more simple or a lot easier to understand. So basically, driving simulator pedals have three axes, accelerator, brake and clutch, whereas flight, uh, dedicated flight sim rudder pedals only have one axis for the actual back, for the actual rudder uh, movement. So it's a single, a single axis. Flight simulator rudder pedals also have toe brakes as well, which can be an individual axis for each of them, but we're just ignoring them for now. And I'll explain why that's not so important after we've actually set this up. So what we're doing is we're basically fooling the simulator into thinking that we have a single axis as opposed to two separate axes. We're making the accelerator and the brake a single axis as far as the simulator is concerned. So once you've got VJoy installed and running, you really don't need to do anything with that. Um, I will say though, um, if you've never used it before, you can basically it's installed and running, you can ignore it. But if you have used VJoy for other devices, so for me, for example, I've got the Brunner Force Feedback Yoke and that uses VJoy, then uh, you might actually have additional stuff pop up in here uh, and you might be aware of what number the device is. But uh, for most of you that have never used VJoy before, you can basically just ignore VJoy once it's installed and running. Now, the bread and butter and the magic is actually happening in UJR, Universal Joystick Remapper. And this is the software that's remapping the accelerator and the clutch to be um, a singular axis as far as the simulator is concerned. So to set that up, out of the box, um, you, you're going to want to select the jo uh, V joystick ID. For most of you, it's going to be one. If you've got other V joy devices, it might be another number. In my case, it's two. Then what you're going to want to do is by default, this will be set to none. And so you're going to want to set this to resets H by default. And then you'll also notice that uh, by default, all these are set to none. And at the top, here, it'll be none and none. And um, even if you go through the numbers, you'll be like, oh, nothing's being detected. Nothing's coming up. Even if you've set this up. Let me actually turn that off so you can see. So um, it'll be on none and nothing, nothing will be happening. You'll be like, what's going on? So what you need to do is you need to just dance on your pedals like a ballerina that's um, hyperactive. <laughs> and then go through the physical stick ID numbers until you find the correct id for your pedal axis and you'll notice which the correct one is because it'll start moving now it might also be the case that the uh, physical axis id is uh not one so you might have to go through the physical ids on on one um and if you didn't pick anything then go through all the physical ids on two uh and so on now, the other thing to be aware of is that you need to make sure that the uh, when you've actually selected it and it's come up and it's moving, you need to make sure that on axis one tab here with this selection, that the slider starts at the top and then moves to the to the bottom. Now, once you've got that detected and working, you then need to go into axis two and you need to do the same thing. But for the accelerator pedal, the difference of the settings on this one, though, are that you want to have axis, mer axis merging set to merge. So, it, so what that's doing is it's combining the two axes and doing the actual, the actual tomfoolery. And then you need to find the physical stick ID and the physical axis. Um, you also need to make sure that this starts at the bottom and then moves to the top. Uh, by doing that, click invert. If it's starting over there and it's going back to front, click invert. So it's going to the bottom and then going to the top. Starts at the top, goes to the bottom. Start at the bottom, goes to the top. So 
that is that set up. We basically now have a VJoy device that's using the pedals um, that the simulator will see as a uh, single axis, effectively exactly the same as uh, a dedicated rudder pedal. So if you go into Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, you'll then see v the VJoy devices pop up and you need to make sure you've got the correct one uh, for yours. Again, if you've never used VJoy before, you will only have one VJoy device showing here. And then you need to go to primary control surfaces. Um, it's, on mine, it's assigned because I've got it all set up, obviously. Um, you, you'll want to go to primary control surfaces and then you want to make sure that you go to the rudder axis in particular not not the uh, there's a button option you want to make sure that you're on the axis option and then you just you just uh, bind click on that to to make sure it's bound uh, by just pushing one of it, either the accelerator or the brake and it will bind it as the uh, axis then click validate on that and what should display is something that looks like this so when i push the clutch you can see that it's moving to the left and when i push the accelerator you can see it's moving to the right Wow, the simulator thinks we've just got rudder pedals here. Isn't that convenient and potentially cost saving? Now, you might also want to adjust the sensitivity of the axis um, uh, and the linearity of it by changing these sliders, uh, and that will change the curve of the sensitivity. If you're finding it a bit too sensitive init initially, you might want to make it like this. Um, or the other way depending on how you want to do it you can also set that up in the vjoy software but I, I think it's best to leave it all 100 percent and you know whatever in the vjoy software and uh, do it in the simulator but that's basically it in terms of getting the getting it to work in the sim um what you can also do in microsoft flight sim 2020 is bind your um bind your brake pedal um to the brake uh, axis in the game now this won't be using the vjoy this will this will you just select your actual uh, logitech fanatec thrustmaster wheel you just select that from the list and then you just bind it here and you can then set this up so that um you're you know you're using your, your middle pedal as the actual brake to slow the air aircraft down and it will t and if you bind it to both the left and right axis it will um, do both brakes, so you'll always brake centrally. Okay, so once we're in the aeroplane, you can see if I push my right, the accelerator pedal, that's going to move the rudder to the right. Check it out. We're now, dri we're now driving. We're now drifting. We're now flying sideways. Uncoordinated flight, as they call it in the land of flying. <laughs> and if I push the clutch the aircraft will now fly sideways in the other direction now what i will say the downsides of using um an accelerator and clutch is that the sensitivity of them is rather high the amount of travel to get the input is is very minimal so it's quite tetchy and does require a little bit of practice to get used to it and uh, also you don't have the benefit of the two pedals being physically connected with uh, flight uh, sim rudders and real world aircraft pedals they are physically connected so you can kind of use the weight of one foot to manipulate uh, the sensitivity of the other foot and uh, it allows you to be a bit more precise a little bit more a little bit easier um, and obviously in this case we can actually push both pedals to, to go set, uh, central which you couldn't do with well i guess if you push both pedals they would just stay still with real rudder pedals. <laughs> but yeah, it, it wouldn't quite be the same. Um, obviously, with the Fanatec V3 pedals I'm using here, the clutch has a digressive mechanism on it as well. So the actual clutch action, um, the, the feel of it is digressive compared to the accelerator, which isn't. If you're using uh, Logitech pedals or Thrustmaster pedals or anything where they're both potentiometer based without a digressive mechanism on them, then you know it's going to be effectively exactly the same as um, real wheel rudder pedals in terms of both having exactly the same foot feel. Now, a big thing that uh, some people will bring up, or people seem to get hung up on in the within sim race, uh, flight simming, is the um, 
the uh, brake, the toe brake situation. Which is weird because, first of all, a uh, lot of real-world planes uh, don't have toe brakes necessarily on the rudder pedals. Uh, some of them have levers and some of them don't have toe brakes at all. Um, so, you know, even in a completely absolute realistic sense, not having toe brakes isn't the end of the world with all aircraft. Um, and then the other thing is, you don't use toe brakes when you're in the air. I mean, there, there might be some random aircraft that use the toe brakes for some esoteric thing whilst flying. The vast majority of air aeroplanes, especially in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, I think all of them, you don't use the toe brakes in the air at all. So you don't need them once you're flying. The only time you ever really use toe brakes on planes that have toe brakes um, in, in real life and, and in flight sims would be uh, when it comes to taxiing and sometimes you want to do a very tight turn on a taxiway uh, using the toe brake on the ground to get the, the, the plane to turn in um, and do a tighter turn. That's where a toe brake would pay, uh, individual toe brakes would pay off. And also maybe if you're doing some like stole flying competitions and maybe if you are doing um, like um, you're trying to uh, th those sort of bush aircraft and you're trying to land on something really tight you might use the left toe brake to knock the plane in if you touch one wheel on the ground before another but there's kind of these situations where toe brakes really actually come into play and obviously you can just bind toe brakes regardless to a button and Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 has a and uh, you can bind it to a button and it will gently apply the toe brake so you don't just nose over the plane um, but with the as, as I said uh, earlier on we can just use the brake pedal and um, we then which is attached to both of them and that works as a brake and we also get rumble from the Fantech V3 brake which is quite fun uh, and allows you to know how hard you're pushing it and if you're pushing it all the way so let's uh, land the aircraft and yeah, the, the main aspect of rudder pedals, aside from coordinated flight, and you can see here that the way you know if you're flying coordinated or not in the cockpit is you either have the, uh, the little ball that's in, a, in liquid that moves left and right, um, and you basically want to push the pedal that corresponds to where the ball is because that will keep the plane in line, making flight more efficient, and also keeping the G-forces uh, vertical on your passengers or on your body. So instead of banging your head against the windows, you're being put. You're always being pushed into your seat, which is what we're used to in reality due to the way we normally experience gravity and forces. Um, so you normally want to keep that ball uh, in the middle, and as I say, you push the pedal corresponding to where the ball is. Um, in the case of this aircraft and uh, glass cockpits, where we no longer have the joys of uh, simple mechanics, you have a uh, you have a Stargate pyramid mothership <laughs> which you have to keep uh, you, you want to keep the mother stargate mothership lined up with the base of the pyramid so that the mothership can uh, connect to the stargate that's how it works guys so you can see the pyramid there if i put a lot of rudder in look at the look at the pyramid disconnect <laughs> from the base no connection to the stargate terrible uh, but if i actually line it up, i'll take my foot back off the rudder pedal a bit and line it up it should come in a bit but yeah, you, you get the idea. So you, ju you just want to get the right amount in. It's difficult to get it spot on. It's actually quite satisfying. I think that's quite a satisfying aspect of flying. It's trying to do that as delicate and as precise as possible. And it's quite a mind bender if you've got used to uh, flights, uh, to, to driving simulators. It's quite a mind bender using your feet uh, for that kind of an action as opposed to an accelerator and a brake. <laughs> Especially when you're sat in your sim rig. It's total mind meltdown, but it stops you from getting uh, mental disorders and diseases in old age. So it's good to keep your brain always uh, suitably confused. Now, let's land here. Uh, by the way, guys, this is Goodwood um, Airfield, which you might know Goodwood from... Uh, they do the Goodwood Festival of Speed, and that's a racetrack as well, going around the outside of the airfield. So... Uh, absolutely awesome that this is of course like all the airfields really nicely represented in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator let's come in and give it a bit of left trim her up a bit oh <laughs> ground effect floating forever there we go pop it down and see I'm using the rudder pedal whoa dear talk, talk about total float give it a bit of break as well 
just using the rudders there to steer on the ground and then we bring it in it's nice and smooth now uh, with the smaller planes they're very very twitchy and actually that's quite satisfying on the on the rudders uh, with larger aircraft they're a lot um, they're a lot less twitchy and um, the rudders tend to work well for actually steering the plane more into an airfield if you're coming in at slight angles and then the main reason you would use rudder pedals when landing <laughs> it's the world's worst takeoff here I've got my flaps down here how? <laughs> it's a terrible example. I was totally distracted there talking. Uh, the main reason you use rudder pedals um, when landing and, and taking off, actually, is uh, if, if, if you've got side wind and it allows you to then actually plop the aircraft down properly without, without completely uh, smashing your wings into the ground and also lining things up properly. And obviously, when you take off, the torque of the engine... Uh, will tend to push uh, the, the aircraft will want to rotate as taking off so you use the rudder pedals to, to negate that so you kind of do need rudder pedals when playing a flight simulator um, especially for takeoff and landing and when there's any wind and with the live weather in Microsoft Flight Sim obviously that uh, that's going to come in a lot but you know I mean that that's basically it to be honest uh, so ultimately as I say I you this solution works perfectly fine uh, it allows you to play the flight simulators more than adequately. I think it's good enough even if you were trying to get into the, the general vibe of using your pedals if you're going to do real world flying as well. Um, as I say, like none of the, none of the, uh, the, the high end pedals I've used feel anything like a real world aircraft that I've flown. Kind of they do, but they're still basically all abstract. Real world. Uh, 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 rudder pedals uh, are quite dynamic in terms of the pressure they're quite dynamic in terms of the amount of force that's required to move them and the nature of how they operate just I don't think can be particularly emulated literally without force feedback motors uh, or without maybe like some kind of load cell solution that still had movement in it so yeah I mean definitely a uh, this is definitely a top solution and uh, so i hope i hope this video has helped those of you that were that've got driving sim pedals and want to get into flight sims i will do a future video where i talk about my actual setup on my sim rig because i'm using a driving simulator with everything attached to it um so i'll go through that because a lot of people are asking about that but um until the next one guys thanks for watching this happy tea drinking subscribe click the bell <laughs> And uh, yeah, g goodbye everyone, goodbye.